Hey scholars, so I wanted you to see uh, another application of advancement to stoichiometry. And one of the questions on the worksheet you guys have is a question that typically gets a lot of questions asked about it. And so I wanna go ahead and go over number eight on that worksheet so that you can see how you might apply advancement to this question. And this is also going to review everything associated with solving this question from start to finish, and including writing the reaction. So it refers back to reaction 3A, and it says how many grams of each compound in 3A remain when the reaction of 6.50 grams of sodium carbonate with 7.00 grams of silver nitrate is complete. And so to start, we need to write the reaction. And so the sodium carbonate, sodium is Na, the carbonate is CO3. But sodium has a charge of plus one or one plus rather, and carbonate has a charge of two minus. So because the carbonate is two minus, we need two sodiums there to balance out the charges. Likewise, the silver nitrate, oops, silver nitrate, both of those ions are one plus and one minus, so that's okay as written. Um, for the complete reaction, I believe in 3A it says that these are solutions, so those are both aqueous and that they react to form silver carbonate and sodium nitrate. And I did tell you that that silver carbonate is a precipitate, which means it falls out of the solution, which means it has to be a solid. And the sodium nitrate would remain in solution as an aqueous product. The silver carbonate, again, the silver is one plus and the carbonate is two minus. So we need two silvers to balance out those charges. And looking at this whole reaction then, you should see that you have two silvers here. So you need two silvers in the reactants. That means that we have two nitrates, which means we need two nitrates in the products which means we have two sodiums and we need two sodiums here, which we already have because the formula was balanced. The next step then would be to calculate your molar masses for these. Sodium is about 23, carbon is about 12, three oxygens would be about 48. So that gets me about um, 46 for the two sodiums plus 48 is 94, plus 12 is 106. And when you include the decimals, you do actually get 105.99 grams per mole. Likewise, for silver nitrate, silver uh, nitrogen is about 14, oxygen is 48, so that gets me to 62. Silver is about 107 and the overall molar mass for that is 169.87 grams per mole. The silver carbonate is 275.75 grams per mole, and the sodium nitrate is 84.99 grams per mole. All of those would be necessary to completely answer this question. Now the other thing I'm gonna go ahead here and do is I'm gonna say initial and final. And my initial for my sodium carbonate is 6.50 grams. And my silver nitrate is 7.00 grams. And if this is reacting, then we're not gonna have any of the products present initially. And this kind of a table is something that we might do with a lot of chemical reactions, and they're particularly useful in particular kinds of situations. 
but it's also going to be a nice way to show my overall results. And the final amounts, of course, is what the question is really asking for, what's remaining. So if we're going to apply advancement to this question, remember that advancement is equal to the moles of compound divided by the coefficient in the reaction. And also recall that moles of compound in the long run are really equal to the mass of compound divided by the molar mass. So we could combine these and for the sodium carbonate, we could say that it is 6.50 grams of sodium carbonate over 105.99 grams of sodium carbonate per mole of sodium carbonate. And this is like doing all the stoichiometry, but because of how the math works, the units will still cancel out and we would still have moles of sodium carbonate. In the balanced reaction then, there's a coefficient of one, and that one really represents one mole of sodium carbonate and it's really one mole of sodium carbonate per mole of reaction. And so what we get when we do the 6.5 over 105.99 is, and then divide by the one is 0 0.061327 moles of reaction. I'm not worrying about significant figures here because we can think about that all the way at the end, but we should really be keeping three sig figs here because of the mass of the sodium carbonate. If we do the same, same thing for the silver nitrate, we have seven grams of silver nitrate, which we divide by 169.87 grams of silver nitrate per mole of silver nitrate, which is then all over two moles of silver nitrate per mole of reaction. So with this whole process, we find that our advancement from the silver nitrate is only 0 0.020604. This is then the smallest advancement which means that the silver nitrate is the limiting reactant. Now what we know from this is that the reaction will only be able to advance by this much since this is the advancement of the limiting reactant. So with this advancement, we can now calculate everything else in the reaction. So we can calculate how much of the sodium carbonate is, has reacted in this reaction. So if the reaction happens this many times, then we take that advancement and we multiply by the coefficient on the sodium carbonate. So this is times one mole of sodium carbonate for every one mole of reaction. 
and then times 105.99 grams of sodium carbonate for every one mole of sodium carbonate. So plugging that in, I find that only 2.18382 grams of sodium carbonate reacted. Now our significant figures are important. And if we can only keep three in our advancement, then we can only keep three in this final mass, which was why I dropped these extra digits down to show that they were extra. They are not significant figures. So 2.18 grams of sodium carbonate reacted. We started with six and a half grams of sodium carbonate. So we need to subtract our 2.18 grams from our 6.5 grams to find how many grams are remaining. And we find that there are 4.32 grams of sodium carbonate left behind. The other one we can fill in right away as well is the silver nitrate. If the silver nitrate is the limiting reactant, that means that all of it reacts and there would be zero grams remaining at the end of the reaction, if it all reacts. Because we don't have any of the products here, when we use this advancement from the limiting reactant to calculate the grams of our products, those will be the amounts of the products that are left behind. So the 0 0.020604 moles of reaction times one mole of silver carbonate for every one mole of reaction because our coefficient in our reaction here is a one times 275.75 grams of silver carbonate for every one mole of silver carbonate And when we plug that into our calculators, we multiply everything in the numerator and then divide by everything in the denominator. We're only dividing by ones. So we have 5.68 grams of silver carbonate. Again, I'm only keeping three significant figures. 5.68 grams. And then the sodium nitrate, 0 0.020604 moles of reaction times two moles of sodium nitrate for every one mole of reaction times 84.99 grams of sodium nitrate for every one mole of sodium nitrate. And again, just multiply by all of the numerators and divide by the denominators. Again, we're just dividing by ones and 3.50 grams of sodium nitrate Notice that 5.68 and 4.32 add to give me 10 grams, plus three and a half grams gives me 13 and a half grams. In the beginning, my six and a half plus seven gave me 13 and a half grams. So if you do this kind of process with the initial and the final, you can also see conservation of mass at play in the chemical reaction. This is how you would use advancement in the whole stoichiometry process, where once you determine the limiting advancement, the limiting reactant, 
in the theoretical advancement of the reaction. You then use that advancement to calculate other quantities. The only one that's really tricky is when you use that for the reactant to remember that that's the amount that actually reacted, not the amount that's left behind. But for the products, as long as you didn't start with any in the beginning, the amount that you find from the advancement, the 5.68 and the three and a half, is indeed the amount that's left over. You could also approach this using the gram to gram conversions. Here's my work for this one. Here's my six and a half grams of sodium carbonate. Here's my seven grams of silver nitrate. I converted both the moles. I picked a product. It, again, it doesn't matter which one. I happen to pick silver carbonate. Then you convert to grams of silver carbonate. And I have enough sodium carbonate to make almost 17 grams of that product, but I only have enough silver nitrate to make about 5.7 grams of that product. Five compared to 17, the five is less, which means the silver nitrate is the limiting reactant, which is what we already found. The nice thing with this is that then you know the 5.68, then you know the final amount of the silver carbonate, and you know that the, silver, that the silver nitrate has completely reacted. Back down here, once you know what the limiting reactant is to use the gram to gram conversions, then you'd have to start from the grams of silver nitrate. You would convert each one to moles. You would convert each one to a different reactant or product. Again, if you go to a product, you're calculating typically the amount that is actually formed and that would be left over after the reaction because it's what you made. Whereas if you calculate a reactant, you're actually calculating how much was used and you still have to do a subtraction to find how much is left over. Um, with this kind of a question, I think the idea of the advancement does save you a little bit of time, but not a huge amount. Um, the advancement is really gonna come more into play when you have many more reactants than we've had in our examples so far. Uh, but it is a very powerful idea to be able to apply. It may not be quite as straightforward as the gram to gram conversions, but again, in this situation, it did save us a little bit of time with all of our conversions. And sometimes it's handy if all you're trying to figure out is what the limiting reactant is. It saves you a little bit of time because you didn't have to go all the way from grams to grams.